No, 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 no. I am not X-Men material. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most memorable film characters known for their aloof or devil may care attitude. I like your style, dude. Number 10, David Wooderson, Dazed and Confused. Richard Linklater's coming of age comedy is full of stoners and hippies who couldn't care less about authority, rules, and structure. You know Wooderson? Oh. How's it going, man? Hey. Pretty good, how's it going with you? Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> but Matthew McConaughey's breakout role as Wooderson stands out. With his mantras and memorable quotes, he encompasses someone who just doesn't give a hoot. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> With his carefree attitude, he is all about just living and not taking anything too seriously. Honestly, he makes us kind of nostalgic for those days when we were just cruising the town or sitting on the football field with our high school friends. When we see him on our screens, we're assured that everything is all right, all right, all right. Let me tell you this, the older you do get, the more rules are gonna try to get you to follow. <laughs> you just gotta keep living, man. L I V I N. Number 9, Jay and Silent Bob, The View as Universe. Clerks was a groundbreaking film when it was released several decades ago, and Kevin Smith and Jason Mew's characters have lived on in infamy ever since. Muse portrays Jay, the outspoken dimwit, while Smith plays Silent Bob, his aptly named accomplice. The two are best friends and ne'er do wells who spend their days hanging out inside and outside of the quick stop. What? What I tell you two about dealing in front of the store? Now drop the kid and pedal your wares someplace else, burn boy. And for the record, the time sucked ass. They're as laid back as can be, not concerning themselves with much aside from their daily, mundane routine, and not getting too wound up by anything that goes wrong. We wish we could disconnect from reality as much as they do without worrying about consequences. What you looking at, man? That's how we did it in the 90s, son! Number 8, Pedro Tapakis and Anthony Mann Stoner, Up in Smoke. Famous for their stand-up routines and films, Cheech and Chong were huge in the 70s as a comedy duo. Man, how far you going, man? <laughs> oh, right here it'd be fine, man. Oh, man, you ain't scared of a little speed, are you, man? Oh, you got some speed, man? Their comedic genius shines in 1978's Up in Smoke, a movie credited with launching the stoner film genre. Cheech Marin and Tommy Chong basically play fictional versions of themselves, and their main priority above all else is, you guessed it, getting stoned. Man, I can't believe we can't find no grass nowhere, man. That's because too many people are smoking it now. And it really makes it tough on the rest of us. Yeah. No matter what befalls them, they manage to keep their cool, or maybe they're just stoned out of their minds. Either way, their calm and dicey situations is out of this world, which is why they make our list. How long you guys been in Mexico? A week. I mean, they did that day. Which one is it, a week or a day? It's a weekday. You got any narcotics or marijuana in here? <laughs> Uh, not anymore. Number 7. Lucas Luke Jackson, Cool Hand Luke. Laid back, devil may care attitudes in film characters are certainly not a new concept, as we see here with this character from the late 60s. You got questions? You come to me. I'm Carr, the floor walker. I'm responsible for order in here. Any man don't keep order spends a night in the box. I hope you ain't gonna be a hard case. When Luke Jackson winds up in a prison camp, his rebellious attitude makes him enemies. Sometimes, when someone defies authority, they become less likable to those around them. But in Luke's case, the more he resists and sticks to his values, the more respect he gains. Just like today, when he kept coming back at me with nothing. Yeah, well... Sometimes nothing can be a real cool hand. Despite his attempts to escape as he copes with grief over his late mother, he never wavers in what he believes. They shouldn't blindly follow rules. Luke is the underdog that we all love to cheer for. Don't you never stop listening to them clinking. Cause they're gonna remind you of what I've been saying. For your own good. Wish you'd stop being so good to me, Captain. Number 6, Jeff Spicoli, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. We couldn't create a list about easygoing characters without including one of the most well-known stoners in any film. You guys had shirts on when you came in here. Well, something happened to him, man. <laughs> Come on, Spicoli, just put the shirts back on. 
Jeff Spicoli is the ultimate rebel and surfer dude, and he truly doesn't care what people think. Who could forget him ordering pizza to his classroom? That's iconic behavior that we wish we were carefree enough to pull off in school. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Learning about Cuba, having some food. Mr. Spicoli, you're on dangerous ground here. Spicoli appreciates the little things in life, like time with friends and riding the waves. This doesn't seem like the type of role that we would see Sean Penn taking on today, but he absolutely nails the chill, laid-back persona in this 80s teen classic. Why don't you get a job, Spicoli? What for? You need money. <laughs> All I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Number 5. Peter Gibbons, Office Space Peter is run down at work and struggles to find purpose in what he does, which makes him one of the most relatable characters around. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that, I, I forgot. Mmm, yeah. You see, we're putting the cover sheets on all TPS reports now before they go out. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. I he works as a programmer and goes about his day doing mundane tasks that leave him feeling unfulfilled. While this initially causes him stress, he changes his tune after a hypnotherapy session transforms him into a laissez-faire employee. You're in deep shit. You were supposed to come in on Saturday. What were you doing? <laughs> Michael, I did nothing. I did absolutely nothing, and it was everything that I thought it could be. Strangely enough, this helps him out at work, and his indifference leaves him more appreciated by those around him. Maybe we should all follow his example. Are you going to go ahead and have those TPS reports for us this afternoon? No. Ah, uh, yeah. Number 4, John Bluto Blutarski, National Lampoon's Animal House. This classic comedy is a tale of two fraternities, the prestigious Omega Theta Pi and the troublemaking Delta Tau Chi. Have another beer, Larry. She's just kidding. <laughs> right, Bluto? The Delta's frat is truly an animal house, and their most carefree, hard partying member is John Belushi's Bluto. A non stop partier, Bluto barely participates in school, pulls pranks, and doesn't seem to care at all about social norms. Don't you have any respect for yourself? This is absolutely gross. That boy is a P I G pig. He starts food fights, initiates toga parties, and concocts a scheme that ultimately ends with a dead horse in the dean's office. He's the ultimate slacker, although he arguably takes it a little too far. This could be the greatest night of our lives, but you're gonna let it be the worst. Oh, we're afraid to go with you, Bluto. We might get in trouble. Well, just kiss my ass from now on! Not me! I'm not gonna take this! Number 3. Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, let's be honest. Who here hasn't ever faked a sick day? Well, for the few who haven't, Ferris Bueller might convince you it's time. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. When high school senior Ferris decides that it's too beautiful a day to waste inside, he has a truly epic day off. He takes his best friend and girlfriend on a whirlwind tour of Chicago, all while the principal and his sister are on his tail. Why should he get to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants? Why should everything work out for him? What makes him so goddamn special? Screw him. He seems genuinely unbothered by any missteps or obstacles, managing to pull it all off with his charm. He's the coolest kid in school, even when he's not there, and his day off is something to be envied by high schoolers everywhere. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Number 2. Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool. Deadpool franchise. While most superheroes are known for their stoic altruism, Deadpool is an entirely different sort of hero. Anyway, I got places to be, a face to fix, and oh, bad guys to kill. His humor and fourth wall breaks are as much part of his character as his superheroic powers. It doesn't matter what the situation is, the merc with a mouth can see the lighter side of life. I'm all about long, sullen silences, followed by mean comments, followed by more silences. So what's it gonna be, huh? Long, sullen silence or mean comment? Go on. You got me in a box here. Ah! Ah! He's reckless and crass, walking to the beat of his very own drum. It's not often that we see an R-rated superhero, and Ryan Reynolds' dark brand of comedy is absolutely perfect for this Devil May Care masked hero. Superhero landing. She's gonna do a superhero landing. Wait for it! Woo! Superhero landing! Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. There are a lot of characters in this crime comedy who don't have their priorities straight. Are you employed, Mr. Lebowski? Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh Walter cares way too much about bowling. Ma just wants to get pregnant, no matter the father. And all the dude cares about is his missing rug, since it tied the whole room together. He's the most laid back, well, dude around, with a fondness for pot and white Russians. Another Caucasian, Gary. Right, dude. He just wants the problems around him to go away, so he can get back to focusing on what really matters. Bowling, wearing mismatched clothing, and hanging out with his friends. The dude doesn't care what others think of him. He's not intimidated by anything, and he, of course, abides. Yeah, well, the dude abides. Which carefree character is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. All the ways you wish you could be, that's me. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.